Radio, keeping you informed. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burby's 99.5 FM. Kite Radio. Radio. With your uh, Wednesday, that should be a Monday, August 24th evening newscast. I am Joshua Van Sleikman. A pleasant good evening to you and thank you for joining us. Former Health Minister and the Chairperson of the People's National Congress Reform, PNCR, Valda Lawrence, who was today released on 100,000 bail for a joint private criminal charge which alleged the forging of a document that was used for a fraudulent elections declaration on March 5, 2020. While Lawrence made her first appearance in the Georgetown Magistrate's Court before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, returning officer for District 4, which is Demerara Mahaika, Clement Mingo, is yet to be served with a summons to appear in court to answer to the said charge. When the matter was called, Lawrence made her way to the courtroom with her attorney, Nigel Hines, that should be Nigel Hughes. The charge alleged that Mingo have been, have been procured by Lawrence or, or on or about March 5, 2020 at the command center of the Ghana Elections Commission GCOM on High and Hatfield Streets, Georgetown, uttered to the Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield the results of the Region 4, knowing it to be forged with intent to defraud the people of Guyana. The charge was filed by People's Progressive Party Civic Attorney Charles Ramson on March 13, 2020. While private prosecutor Glenn Hanneman made no objection to bail being granted to Lawrence, since she appeared in court without being served with the summons, Hughes asked the magistrate to place Lawrence on her own self-bail. However, bail was granted to Lawrence in the sum of $100,000, and the matter, which was transferred to the principal magistrate, Faith Magosti, was adjourned to September 11, 2020. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Shalimar Ali Haq, Senior Counsel, is expected to make a decision on September 11, 2020, on the way forward for the criminal charges filed against the Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, of the Guyana Elections Commission. Lowenfield made his appearance at the Georgetown Magistrate's Court today before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, who was accompanied by one of his, one of his attorneys, Senior Counsel Neil Boston. When the matter was called, a representative from the DPP's office, Tariq Mohammed, informed the court that the DPP has intervened in the matter and that on the next hearing, a decision will be made on the way forward. As such, the chief magistrate adjourned the matter to September date and transferred same to Principal Magistrate Faith Magosti. On Friday last, the Guyana Police Force announced that the DPP had decided to take over the criminal charges that were filed against Lowenfield, returning officer of Region 4 Claimant Mingo, and former Health Minister and Chairperson of the People's National Congress Reform, Valda Lawrence, in relation to the March 2, 2020 general and regional elections and the event that followed. According to a uh, that should be according to a release from the police, a comprehensive investigation into the allegations would be conducted by the GPF. We tell you now that a major investigation involving the seizure of one of the half tons of cocaine by German authorities in a container of rice that came from Guyana has raised troubling questions about the system at customs. It appeared that local investigators, including those from the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit, Kanu, were stumped when it was discovered that the Guyana Revenue Authority GRA system, called the Automated System for Customs Data, was reflecting something other than what left Guyana. Kaichiro was told that the system reflected 20 containers when investigators went in. However, the Miller Nan Prasad and Company Limited only sent out 12. This was reflected from shipping documents filed by the Guyana Rice Development Board. Kanu, tight-lipped on details, made it clear that it will continue to participate in inter-agency collaborations in its bid to tighten the grip on the narcotic distributions throughout the countries. That should be the narcotics distributors throughout the countries. Meanwhile, Nan Prasad Group of Companies, in a statement expressing relief that its name has been cleared, expressed worry of the strength of the customs and other systems in Guyana. The group disclosed it was engaged by local investigators and cooperated. Nan Prasad made it clear that it has always prided itself as a solid cooperate citizens with over 30 years of experience in agriculture. 
Less than a year ago, the joint venture company, Eureka, that should be Eureka Atlantic Offshore Medical Services, was established between Eureka Medical Laboratories and Atlantic Offshore Medical Services. EAOMS was launched to serve the oil and gas industry in Guyana. According a new ambulance, that should be according to a statement, a new ambulance service launched to serve the oil and gas industry. The statement released to the media yesterday said that EAOMS is designed to add value in the healthcare system in Guyana by developing strategies that continuously meet the growing demands of the health sector. In this regard, it was noted that the collaboration with the St. Joseph's Mercy Hospital was established and both partners are now ready to launch the Basic Life Support Ambulance Service. It was revealed too that the EAOMS procured an outfit its ambulance according to international standards. We tell you that the government of Guyana through President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali has approved $350 million to support the cash-strapped Guyana Forestry Commission to pay salaries to staff and utility services. According to the commission today, the new administration is currently saddled with the burden due to the mismanagement of the sector under the previous administration. Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat, during a recent engagement with staffers of the Commission, committed to seek the President's intervention to obtain financial support for the agency. The GFC has been struggling to pay staffers on time and fund other critical operations cost for several months. According to the GFC, Minister Bharat has already commenced discussion with the Commission and other stakeholders within the forest sector to examine strategies to enhance the financial performance and management capabilities of this very important sector. GFC had blamed reduced revenues from the closure of several forestry concessions and increased expenses from monitoring activities as a season for as a reason for the financial situation. Rang from Region 7 on Thursday last foil a robbery plan alleged hatched by the gangsters on a mining camp at that should be a mining camp at Kurapong, Kuruni Mazaruni. That should be Kayuni Mazaruni. This development was confirmed yesterday by Regional Commander Dion Moore. On Wednesday last, Moore had informed this newscast that he had planned to investigate reports surfacing of a gang terrorizing, threatening, and bullying miners at the location. The commander had said that he had even received a call from the police headquarters at Ivleri Georgetown, alerting him about the ongoing situation. According to the information received by this newscast from a source at Kurapong, police ranks arrived unexpectedly on Thursday, one day after a dredge owner life was threatened by the gang. Stay with us, coming up after the break is your COVID-19 updates.